SCP-101. This is episode planning to land on the Mun. In advance for this, I noticed that we're going to maybe need a lift ability. Like we're gonna have to upgrade our launch pad so we can push a little more than 140 tons. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before we begin. And just to review where we last left off, we have missions to bring a Munstone back, science data from the space around the Mun and the surface of the Mun, as well as planting a flag on the Mun, and of course, landing, planting the flag, and returning to Curve. We also left off by grabbing the fuel systems required for these new engines that we more to the MUN to do some breaking ground science, which we also unlocked. We have the photovoltaic panels required to power the goo monitor as well as the probodyne experiment control station. Now, the thing about these, when you have an engineer placing the photovoltaic or the photovoltaic panels, it'll push more power than the standard amount of power whenever you place them. Uh, it doesn't really matter who places the uh, Probodyne Experiment Control Station, but I like to have my engineers place those as well. However, when you put a goo ob ed monitor down with a scientist, it does provide more science. So it's good to take a scientist along for those, engineers along for everything else. So any science experiment that you place, it's better to place with the scientist. Alright, so outside of that, we have everything else that we need, so we can go ahead and start creating the vessel that we're going to be using for this. So we'll head to the VAB to begin creating the vessel that we're going to be using for this mission. And what we're planning to do is send at least two Kerbals down. So we're going to try to make this an all-in-one vessel instead of sending a vessel there and then docking and then landing and then redocking and coming home, which is the Apollo style. We're going to do a direct landing and return. So we'll start off with our new command pod, the Mark II command pod. We'll set it to heavy. And then, just in case something happens, you never know, we'll go ahead and place a docking port up here in case we have to rescue them. And set that to grandparent. And then we'll hop all the way down here to the bottom and get our radio mount parachutes. We'll set two drogues, we'll move over a couple spaces, set two here, and then move over a couple spaces again, and place them on this side, so now we have four. We'll set every one of those to grandparent, and then we'll whip out the larger radial chutes, try to line it up to the bottom of the docking port, set those to grandparent, and then we'll go to the move tool, and move those in a space, looking good. Now there's nothing else under the utility parts that we need. We'll get to the cargo shortly. Let's go ahead and put some of the science that we're going to be using on the surface on here. We'll put the thermometer about here, set the radial to 1, and then whip out the barometer, hop around to the other side, and place it there. Okay, we'll save the mystery goo for here in a moment as well. Let's go on ahead and put about four of these batteries in here, and we want to make sure that they are nice and balanced on the weight of their placement. And then we'll move those into the command pod. And then we'll go ahead and place our solar panels. Now if we place them here with radial four, oop, okay, move them one space over. If we place them here with radio 4, they should not be blocking the hatch. Doesn't look like they are, so we're good. Alright, moving on along, we'll go ahead and place the 1.8 meter heat shield on that. And make sure to set that to grandparent part. And let's see what else that we might need on the bottom of the heat shield. I just don't like having that gap with the fairing myself, but you can do that if you want. It all comes down to preference. We're also going to need to make sure that we have a nose cone on top of that docking port for aerodynamics upon launch. Set that to grandparent. And then 
in order to get rid of that to lose just that little tiny bit of mass and gain a very small amount of delta v from that we need to enable the staging on the docking port and while we're at it let's go ahead and make sure that our staging is correct let's separate the larger radial parachutes from the drogue chutes and then we'll make sure to put those larger ones up top so they open last very good now we just need to move that decoupler up here and make sure to remember that we need to stage that docking port release at an earlier time like as soon as we hit the upper atmosphere going past the Karman line into space at 70,000 meters that's around the time that we're going to get rid of that because we're not going to need it anymore from that point on alright so moving on along we are going to need some RCS thrusters which we will place about here but we're going to have to swap to radial two and then hop around to the other side and put them there and with the RCS thrusters we are going to need some fuel for it so let's pop these roundified monopropellant tanks I'd say we're only going to need about two but just in case let's pack four in there and set those to grandparent part Then we will move those into the pod. Looking good. Looking very good. Alright. Now we'll move on to setting our cargo storage units. Now we're not really going to need two of these, but just for the sake of um, balance and, you know, just to have a backup, we'll radial two of these underneath the parachutes there and then set those to grandparent. And in one of them, we will put our goo, a photovoltaic panel, and the control module. And then in the other one, we'll have a backup goo and a couple more of these photovoltaic panels. A photovoltaic. There we go. Alright, and then we'll just need to move these cargo units in to where it's nice and flush with the vessel like that looking good and as I had mentioned before we have the mystery goo still but uh, before we place those let's move these cargo containers down just a hair to have a little bit more room to place those say so nothing is popping out of the heat shield so it's looking good now we'll take those go back to place and pop those on sideways like that we'll auto strut those to grandparent good. Now if I'm not mistaken, we can move these in one space instead of two like we have been, and then go to strut. And we can take the struts. Oh, okay, so it's not gonna do that. Alright, so let's go ahead and move those in one more space like we have been. Then there is another way to strut the, um, the nose cone here onto the vessel, but we're about to get to that here shortly. So we have our command pod. Let's uh, figure out what we're going to name this vessel. Okay, so we're going to make this the beginning of our R3 series. Or actually, so this is going to be a Muncraft. We'll just start our M series. We'll name it M1. If I'm not mistaken. There's no dash in between that the way that I've been naming these. Nope. Okay, so we have our M1 command pod everything that we're going to need for that command pawn is on there. So now let's move on to the rocket. Now we're going to be dealing with what's called asparagus staging. You need these external fuel ducts to be able to asparagus stage, so it's a good thing that we unlock these larger tanks as well as that uh, external fuel duct or fuel line. So now let's begin by placing one of these A215 fuel tank adapters, it takes us from our 18 meter to a 25 meter. And we'll set that to grandparent part. I like to color it black and white. Makes it look a little more rugged and rockety, I guess you could say. Alright, so we're going to uh, finish that off with a smaller Rocco Max fuel tank on the bottom here. And auto strut it to grandparent part. And then this is where we're going to break out a new engine. It's called the Poodle engine. It's a very efficient vacuum engine. It's going to be very useful for this mission. It's mostly going to be for um, 
finishing off our landing as well as getting us back home. Now with that, since we are going to be using it to land, we are going to need some landing gear. And the best landing struts that we have are these LT1s. Let's go ahead and try to place those as low as we can on the fuel tank and then radial for those. We'll set that to deploy shielded and retract those. And then we'll get on to our side staging for this. For the side staging, let's break out those TT38K radial decouplers. Now, uh, before we go any further with that, I want to explain something about the Poodle engines. As you can see, they can push 25 tons of mass, so if we really wanted to, we could make this a bit larger. And for the sake of safety, for anyone who has never been to the MUN or is still attempting to land on the MUN and learning some things about this and how to fly these vessels and so on, we'll just go ahead and put that larger tank on just so we have more fuel to play with. Make sure to auto strut that to grandparent. The engine should be set to root. And now it's still going to be able to push that with a little bit more delta V. And we'll go ahead and replace those um, landing struts back on here. Radio 4. Alright, we are back where we were. Alright, we are not going to need the missing ladder it's mentioning because we're going to be on the moon. There's not really much gravity to work with. So we can use our RCS thrusting backpacks to move around and hop up and down off the vessel instead of adding more weight to the vessel with a ladder. Alright, so let's get to the side staging and break out those decouplers. Now, this is where I'm going to be explaining what's called the asparagus staging. We'll set it to radial 2 and then copy it and make sure to keep it nice and level with where it was placed originally and set another two here. And we'll set those to grandparent. And now the reason I did that is we're typically like most would radial for that instead of radial two by radial two. You can now eject those separately. So let's go ahead and make sure that's staged correctly to where we can separately eject those. And we want these to be the ones that we eject first so they don't get in the way in case we do use those to land on the moon. And then we can get rid of these two after that. And then we'll put our fuel tanks on. We're going to be using these FLT-800s. Aim for the center of those decouplers and put those on. And then copy, just like we did with the decouplers themselves. Aim for the center of this decoupler. And place them there. And we'll make sure to auto strut those to grandparent. And those weigh 4.5 tons, which means we'll have to have something with an impulse of 45 or higher, which is perfect for these very efficient terriers that we've been using. We'll place those and set those to root, and then copy them, and set those at the bottom ends of these other ones. And now we have the vessel that we'll be using to land on the moon in space, as well as transferring there. We need to make sure to top those off with some nose cones, set those to grandparent, copy, place, then we're going to break out those struts. Now this is where we will be strutting to that nose cone at the top of the vessel. Let's try to get these up as high as possible on the nose cones, and then set them nice and evenly onto this nose cone without the struts popping out past the edge of the nose cone. And then we'll just go ahead and do the same thing with the other ones. And there's a reason why we're placing them up towards the tip like this, which you'll see here in a moment after we get these placed. Put those about there. Pretty close. Alright, so now we're going to go just a hair beneath that and place these on the decoupler as close to the center of that as possible and do the same thing to the other ones. I want to make sure that they are as close to the placement as possible to the other two that we just placed. Which would be about here. Do the same thing with these that we did with the last two. 
And then we need to make sure to do the same thing to the bottom. However, we're not going to be putting it on the fuel tank, the external fuel tanks. So we're going to be putting it on the central fuel tanks, and we'll set it to four. And we just need to make sure to place these properly on these externals, like so. Should look like that. Now those are all, all those external fuel tanks are strutted to the central vessel itself nice and proper now, so let's make sure to connect these fuel tanks properly with the struts as well, just for a little more stability. We'll do that, and then hop over to this one, do it up top again, and then hop down to the bottom, and do the same thing here. After we do that, we should be fairly well strutted, and we will move on to what's called the asparagus staging with those fuel lines. Now, where we are going to be ejecting these outer fuel tanks first, we want to make sure that the fuel lines are running from those to the other external tanks, and then those will be ejected after that, leaving the central stage on its own. So we'll attach those to the central stage. And then we need to off at the same time. And then once the fuel and these tanks are used up, the first two that we're going to be decoupling will eject those, which will leave these two side tanks and that central stage with a full tank of fuel still. And the same thing will happen here. We'll eject these other outer tanks, leaving only the central stage, and it will also still have a full tank of fuel. And after that, we'll be ejecting that central tank and landing back at Kerbin. So remember that I said we were going to need to enable the staging on the stocking port. That way we can get rid of this once we get into space. Well, by about the time that we're activating all those engines, we'll be in space. And we'll be making our transfer to the MUN. So about that time, we're going to be getting rid of this. So let's take that docking port now that it's staged and drop it right here. And then we'll move on to the rocket stages that will get this into orbit. First off, we'll need to use our new TD25 decoupler and place that under here. And just in case we do happen to use any of these stages to land on the MUN, let's go ahead and go back to our landing legs and kind of like the way we do our aerodynamic fins, we're going to place these a few spots over, we'll radial to that, copy, and then place them on the opposite side, copy again, run over to these, move them over a few spaces, place it, copy, move over a few spaces again on this side, and place them. Then we'll set those to deploy shielded, retract them, deploy shielded, retract, we'll do the same thing over here. Now no matter what we have left by the time we get to the moon, we are going to have a safe way to land. So now we can move on to the rest of the vessel. Let's start off by checking our weight. We are at 43.6 tons. Okay, so we can't really add a whole lot more to the stage that we're planning to use now, which is it's going to utilize the skipper engine here, which in space can push 65 tons, but from the surface it can only push about 56.8. So let's see what this larger Rocco Max is going to do. It's going to set us at 52.6. We'll take that, we'll set it to grandparent, and then we'll go ahead and stick the skipper on the bottom of that, and set it to root. And we're at 55.6 tons, it can push 56.8. So that'll be okay for a mid-stage, 
but that's not going to be enough to get us out of the atmosphere, into space, and in orbit around Kerbin, so we're going to need more. Let's set to radio 1, go ahead and save our progress, and let's move this vessel up a little bit higher so we have more room to make the launch stage. And we're also going to be asparagus staging a launch stage. First, we'll set the decoupler here, set it to grandparents, and we can't really add a whole lot more weight to this, but we're going to try to. We'll set another one of these down here, and set it to grandparents, and then put another skipper on it. That's not really looking too well, is it? Let's go on ahead and get rid of that. And we'll just add on to this stage. Only a little, though. We'll set the smaller Rocco Max tank on. And then I'll just start that to grandparent and put this back on. And we are now at 60. Okay. We can still push this a little more. Let's get rid of the smaller one and just copy this larger one. Put it here. And then put the engine back on. 64.6. That's about as much... Um, mass as we can push with this once it reaches the upper atmosphere or the vacuum. So we'll keep that. Then we'll break out the decouplers again and do the asparag asparagus staging again, but um, it's going to be a little tricky this time because we don't have a whole lot of room to work with between what we're going to be asparagus staging down here and what's above us. So let's put the I'll set it to 2, copy, set them on the side as well. And then we'll grandparent those same way that we did it on the upper staging, but uh, it's going to be a little bigger. And originally we could only push 114 tons in the space. There's a really good reason why we upgraded that so we could push more, and you're about to find out. We're going to take the largest Rocco Max tanks that we have and Set those as low as possible onto these decouplers as we can. Copy those. Do the same thing on the other side here. And that should give us just enough room to be able to put a nose cone on. If not, we can move them down. Just make sure to set those to grandparent. And let's go ahead and check out our nose cones. Okay, we don't have the larger nose cones. Which means we are going to have to break out these tank adapters, which will present a problem, but we'll take care of that. We'll auto-strut those to grandparent, copy them, place those here, and then we will go to the move tool and select the main tank and move those down as much as possible, which looks to be about there. We need to make sure to move these as well to about there. And we have a little bit more room, but still not quite enough, do we? Well, let's see what we can do then. We'll set these here, set those to grandparent, copy them, move them to here. And now we're going to have to do a little adjusting. We're going to have to take these decouplers and move them to a diagonal point, like so. Pretty much the opposite of the way they were originally placed. We just need to make sure that they're still lined up nice and evenly. And to do so, we'll put ourselves at an angle like this, and then move ourselves around. And then move over to where we can grab these and do the same thing. There we go. Now they should be looking correct. Looking good. Okay, so now there's more room for the nose cones. This is just going to require quite a bit more strutting. So let's put those nose cones on. Auto strut those to grandparent. Now let's figure out also how much mass we have between all these tanks and the nose cones. This is 0.3, those are irrelevant. Let's go to our fuel tanks. That's about one ton. We'll add that on top of the 6.75, making it 7.75 tons. Then we'll add on the 18. Let's see, 18 plus 7 is 24, I believe. 
that right? No, it's 25. Okay, so it's about 25.75 tons. And once again, these push about 56.8, so that's still plenty. So we can add, uh, oh, <laughs> let's uh, add one more of these larger Rocco Maxes to the bottom of each of these. Like so. Make sure to grandparent part those. And then we will just copy this skipper to place on the bottom of each of these. Then we just need to strut and asparagus these. So, and we'll start off like we did last time with the nose cone. Go to the highest point on the nose cone. And then go to the highest point that we can strut those which looks like it might be the nose cone up here. So we'll just go ahead and strut those to the proper point on this nose cone, which will be right here. It should look something like, oh, it's not going to grab, but it did grab up there, which is okay too. So we'll just do the same thing to the other ones. Zoom in. Get a nice high tip there. Go up to the nose cone here and do the same thing that we did last time. So hopefully it will also grab onto the same place that it did last time. Looking good. Okay. So those are strutted up nice and high. We're going to go to the side now. And strut those to these fuel tanks. Well, I guess the engine, since it's already at the bottom of the fuel tank there. Do the same thing on the other side, which should be about right here, if I'm not mistaken. Let's find out. Does that look right? That does not look right. We need to move it over one more space. So let's grab that, move it over another space. There we go. And we'll place it and attach it here. Check and see if that looks right after we get a place. Does that look right? Nope, still one more space over. Okay. That should do it. One more space. Place and place. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll just do the same thing to the other side. Let's see, we'll go ahead and set this here in advance, and then once we turn it and touch that line. Should be at the same spot. And then set our strut here. And then do the same thing on this side. Looking good. Now we just need to strut it to the central stages from there. But to do that, we are going to go ahead and just attach them to the central stage and set the radial to 4 to make it a little easier on ourselves. And utilize all this free space that we left here. And we'll just place it about there. <coughs> now if we look, all four of those are now attached to the central stages from there. Just go ahead and do the same thing about halfway down between these two Roccos. Oh, we had those set to two still, so let's place that, pick it back up, and set it to four. And we just need to find that central point on those outer stages to set these. Do a little bit of camera play to see if we can find an easier way to do that. Nice, good angle. There we go. As soon as those shift from the left to the right like that, you know you're where the central point on those are, so you can just place those there. Now those are nice and tight on those central stages. We just need to stage or uh, strut those to one another at this point. And we'll line these struts up with the ones from up top. Like so. 
see we place those right on that band there so we'll place it right on the band on this side and we'll go over to the other ones and do the same thing here and place those here okay so now they're strutted together from the top we need to strut them in the center as well as the bottom so let's do that again and the other one just have the bottom left. We'll set our struts down as low as possible. That should be good. Do the same thing to the other side. Looking good. This should be okay, but just in case, we're also going to cross strut them from the interior. We just need to find the central point. We'll put it on that band. And try to place those right next to each other. There we go. And we'll do the same thing to the other ones. Find our central point, which is about here. Now this should be nice and stable for our launch, but I do want to do one more set of struts, but we'll take that and move it in a couple spaces, and then put that little off from the center there so we can place them on this side as well. I think those are a little further out than they need to be, so we'll need to check that. They are. Okay, so let's grab that and move those in one spot. There we go. A little lower than it needs to be, too, so we'll raise that up as well after we place those. Raise it up one little notch there. That looks a little better. Okay, so it's still a little, a little too high, so we'll move it down about half a notch. There we go. And then we'll place those on the other side of the center of that fuel tank. Looking good. Close enough. We'll do the same thing over here. Now we did move those in two spaces, so we'll move them in two spaces on this side. Nope, oh, zoomed in too soon. Okay, one, two, place, and then find the center. Place it to the left of the center. Do the same thing on this side. We'll go one, two, place it. Make sure that, okay, so it's too high. So let's lower it down about a notch. And by notch, I mean I'm taking the size of that strut where it actually makes contact on the, to the fuel tank and lowering that down by itself one notch. Okay, so that's about right. So we'll place that there. Looking good. Okay, so we have all the struts needed to make this thing nice and uh, stable. Kind of noticing something about those struts on the bottom, though. They look a little off, don't they? Something isn't right here. That or it just doesn't appear to look right, but it is right. Not entirely sure. Let's let's find out. Moving down from the interior, it should make a nice... Yeah, okay, well that still looks okay. Just looks weird from... Right, uh, where is it? We did place those too high. Okay, I see now. Let's uh, grab those and place them where they should be. <laughs> there we go. Now we're looking right. Okay, let's save our progress. And now we'll set up the asparagus staging for these by grabbing the fuel lines. And just like we did up top, we're going to asparagus stage these, but we're going to need to set the fuel lines up here so they can actually touch the central stage. Now, these are placed a little awkwardly, but when we stage them, they'll still be okay. 
we'll just have to check our rotation but it shouldn't matter too much and it really doesn't matter which ones we stage first so we'll just attach them how we want like so just make sure one is set to the other outer tank and then move in a couple spaces and set these fuel lines to go to the central tank and we just need to make sure that we are decoupling these two tanks before we decouple these so let's go down and check our staging now when we lift off we're going to want those to be our first stage all those engines firing together at the same time all five and okay come on there we go we will add a stage if it'll cooperate okay we will add a stage and once again the one connecting to the other outer fuel tanks are the ones that we're going to get rid of first which are these so we need to make sure those go first and then followed by the other outer tanks then we need to set the, de the decoupler that's going to uh, get rid of the central tank up with these five engines looks like it's already good to go now our uh, docking port stage kind of snuck its way down here we don't want to lose our nose cone as soon as we launch so let's pull that out of there and then we'll set those in between the second outer tank decouple on that asparagus and this decouple actually it might be better to go ahead and just put those after we decouple these larger bottom stages to where we can ignite the engines and then get rid of this so that's what we'll do okay so everything should be staged properly but before we check that we need our aerodynamics however again before we set our aerodynamics let's put our launch stability enhancers on we need to find our center of mass for that that way we can place these at the center of mass and we'll put those there and radial 2 and then move over and set these on these other two outer tanks as well make sure they look nice and even looking very good okay and then we'll just lower our vessel down back to ground level like we always do where it's just a hair above the ground very good okay and we need to make sure that those clamps are going off with the first stage and we want our central engine to be going off first not sure why that happened but let's try that again can try to place these in here okay so I'm not sure why it's doing that let's hit the stick in a couple times move away from there make sure that those are not highlighted as two but instead as one hmm well then okay we'll do it another way we'll just take these and move them up to this stage we'll double tap with X or A depending on what system you're playing to reduce that back to where those are together a little bit of lag going on because we're reaching some pretty high part count but I digress let's make sure that central engine goes off first let's get rid of that bunk stage there and after that central engine ignites we want to decouple then these other ones will light up need to make sure to separate those decouplers again and then we'll check our staging okay so we have central decouple and then outer firing off altogether and after these first sets of outer tanks are used up they will decouple then the next set will decouple and the central stage will decouple all five of these engines will ignite and at that point we will be getting rid of that nose cone off the docking port and the first set of the outers will decouple there then the second set then the central by then we're going to be landing and returning from Kerbin make sure our 
drogue shoots go off first, and then our main shoots. Okay, so all of our staging is correct. We just need to set our aerodynamics now. So let's activate the thrust overlay and the aerodynamic overlay. And then we will put four of these about here on the central stage. And as you can see, when I zoom out, that's not going to be enough to reduce our aerodynamic point to be in between our center of mass and our center of thrust. So let's grab those, copy them, and so it won't collide with our um, towers here, we will place these to the center at first and then move them over one, two, place. Actually, make sure it's lined on it there. Okay, and then grab it and copy it and place some on the opposite side. A little tricky. There we go. And then we'll copy it, move it over, do the same thing over here. Let's see. That's about the first spot. So one, two, three. And then we'll copy them again. As soon as the lag stops. <laughs> and place them on the opposite side again. Should look like that. Make sure that they look like they are placed correctly and evenly. Looking good. And our center of aerodynamic point is in between our center of mass and thrust, so everything is correct. We're just missing the ladder that we're not going to be using. Docking port used as a decoupler, that's okay. Cannot transmit science, well, we're bringing all the science home. So let's save our vessel. Now we have a two Kerbin, or two Kerbal moon rocket, or moon rocket. So let's try this bad boy out. Just make sure we have it saved. We have 163,745 dollars, which is plenty to launch this. We'll be getting plenty from all those contracts to make up for it. Let's make sure that we have our pilot and our engineer in here. We're not taking a scientist this time because we don't have um, a large enough command pod for that. Looks like something's kind of poking its way through the command pod too. Need to figure out what that is before we move on any further, and I think it is a battery. So let's grab our move tool and try to move the battery in a little more. There we go. Looking good. Now let's save. Make sure that our kerbals are ready to go. They are. So now let's launch. drink real quick while it's loading. And we may need to extend beyond the hour point for this episode, but we'll see. I think it's going to take more than 15 minutes to land and return, but <coughs> we didn't build this for nothing, did we? Looking good, looking stable. Let's go ahead and set our SAS, throttle up, and launch. Nice and stable. Still pointing at zero degree inclination. So now we're just waiting to hit 100 meters per second and slowly move our way over to that 80 mark by 250, as per usual. Once we are about at that 80 mark and start starting to move over towards that 90 mark, we're going to be getting rid of the first asparagus staging, or the first two sets of tanks. As you can see, if you're looking at the um, fuel consumption on those stages that we have going on, two are a lot lower 
that's because of the asparagus staging and those are the two that we're going to be de uh, decoupling first here in a moment. Just make sure to hit that AD mark by about 250. Make sure the probe rate is still lined up there and that we are at a 90, 90 degree inclination. And we'll slowly start moving towards that 90, ready to decouple the first two tanks like that. Just try to keep it as nice and straight as possible on that program when you do so you don't collide with them. Now we're moving towards trying to hit 500 meters per second or greater by the time we hit that 90 degree inclination on the 90 mark. Try not to do it too quickly though or else you're not really going to gain much speed. sideways on that 90 degree inclination and by about then we're gonna start to circularize towards 100 and, or 100,000 meters should be getting close to okay it's building up speed a lot faster now so at about 100 or 1,200 meters per second we should be going sideways Looks like where I got to that 90 degree mark a little sooner, it might be a little over 1200. But okay, let's go ahead and start to move sideways. And roll a little bit to where those fuel tanks are a little more even with that horizon line for now. So that'd be a, about there. Make your nav ball look like it's got a little little bit of an X going on. Let's get ready to stage. And three, two, one. Get rid of those outer stages. Very nice. Alright, now let's back off for a second and check our apoapsis out. Make sure that we are centered on the horizon on our nav ball. And then begin to burn again. A little lower is okay. Like that. Once that hits 100,000, we're going to back off. Finish our circularization at the apoapsis once it reaches 100,000. By then, it should be close to halfway circularized. And 100,000. Okay. Let's warp to where we have about 30 seconds or, or, or so left. Make sure that we are pointing and locked on prograde as we are warping. And upon arrival, we'll let the vessel go ahead and reorient itself as we also reorient the roll and rotation. attempt to. I might have to turn the RCS on to do this. And once we get our orientation rolled and rotate it correctly, we'll lock and then turn prograde back on. We are now 12 seconds away. A little late, but better late than never. Let's start our burn. Finish our rotation, or uh, circularization burn to make orbit around Kerbin. Watching for that periapsis to poke its head out. Now if we burn for more than like seven more seconds, it won't be perfect, but it'll be close enough. But we should reach it before then. And it's a little bit more. That's a pretty good orbit. We'll take it. Let's save in case, you know, the Kraken 
and prepare to go to the mun. Now let's set the mun as our target. We will fast forward with our time warp to where the mun and our vessel are lined up on our vessel's line right at the tip. A little before so we can let the vessel have a little time to um, rotate back towards the prograde. And once we reach the prograde, as you can see, our target mark is almost right on top of the prograde. So we'll just wait until it gets to the prograde mark. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and... Okay, we don't have those solar panels, we have the static ones. So we don't have to worry about extending the solar panels just yet. But we do need to remember that we need to grab scientific data from them to bring home to complete that contract. Now, we are starting to dip into the target line, so let's go ahead and start burning. Finishing off this central stage from the launch. Looking good. Here in a second, we're gonna have the stage. And stop those engines for a second stage again so we can get rid of that nose cone. Upon doing so, we'll turn the RCS on, go to our docking mode, and move ourselves down a little bit away from that nose cone. <coughs> and then we'll go back to the map view. Or actually, before doing that, we'll go back to staging mode, make sure our RCS is off and slowly start to burn so we don't smash into that nose cone once it's out of play kick it on full and then we need to burn a little lower so our prograde starts to line back up with our target and like my friend DaVinci here pointed out we need to make sure that we're burning ahead of it just a little bit we'll just uh, put it about there our burn like this. That way we are literally forcing that prograde mark to go down over top of the target mark. But it's very important to stay at 90 degrees of inclination or else we will miss the plane being level with the mun as you can see here. Um, once we start to get these rendezvous markers popping up, let's set our focus on the mun zoom in a little bit and we'll highlight our apoapsis just like we did when we went to the mun last time. We'll continue the rest of our burn nice and slow and once we make contact we will very slowly bring this in to as close to about 15,000 meters as possible. Okay, very good. Let's save. And then open up our time warp, move it forward once. It didn't affect our periaps much at all, so we'll keep it. And while that's active, we will go ahead and warp somewhat close to that periaps, not too close. Because we have a, a bit to do once we get there. And this way we'll have a few minutes to fool around and do what we need to do. And upon arrival, let's go ahead and orient ourselves retrograde and refocus on the vessel by hitting in the two sticks, like so. And we have two minutes to get this done. Okay, so our rotation's already ready. Now we just need to um, grab that space around the moon as per contract, which we'll do by grabbing a crew report, I guess. And we'll hop out, grab that crew report. Since it's our first time using Bill here. Oh boy, can't wait to see what that's about. Since our first time using Bill, we'll open up his menu and set his lighting correctly. I like to set his, my engineers to yellow. As soon as I get that, okay, let's grab that uh, crew report now.
freeing up space for another crew report once we land. Let's get back in the vessel. Set back to retro. Hello. Okay, now we still have 59 seconds. So once it hits about 15 seconds, we'll start our burn and circularize around the mun. Hello, White Wolf. Really wondering what's going on with NASA with this urgent broadcast they have going on. But let's focus on the mission. We can check that out here, sh here after the mission, I guess. Alright, and once it hits about 15 seconds, we will begin our retro burn to circularize around the moon. Two, one, burn. Once we see our apoapsis, we'll stop, highlight it, wait till that's down to about five seconds, and begin to burn again. Bring that down as closely as possible to between 15,000 meters down to 10,000 meters. By then, it should wrap around, and the periapsis will be on the other side. Looking good. Okay, so now we have a nice stable orbit around the moon, nice and close. Let's save. And we're waiting to reach the day side, and we're going to try to land in this crater over here. So let's go ahead and time warp over there. And we'll set this to land, or surface. Once we reach, we'll give it a moment to reorient towards retrograde. And once it's done reorienting towards retrograde, we will begin the retro burn to land on the surface. We'll just make sure that the trajectory is a little past where we're wanting to land. Okay, so we are now at retrograde, so let's begin the burn. Nice and smooth and slow. Halfway between where we want to land and where we are. Or beyond, I mean. See, so we're wanting to land somewhere around here. So we want it to be somewhere out here. And from here, we'll just take over from our natural view. Let's reorient our vessel to where it's nice and even with the horizon, like so. So we have a nice smooth landing. Activate our landing gear. Looks like our two outer stages were burnt up a long time ago, so let's get rid of those. Alright, and then reorient our vessel again. We have a good bit of fuel left on those. Looking good for a nice landing. But let's, uh,. Make sure to turn our RCS on as we're landing. Let's see, let's turn our vessel this way. That way the sun is facing our hatch on our command pod when we land. And plus we can get a nice view of the surface of the moon as we're passing over top when we go into our command pod. Or we will here soon. Oh, that's right. Wrong command pod. This won't let you look straight down. It's making you look straight up. Oh, anyways. Uh, let's keep an eye on the ground and watch for a nice spot to land. And once we see one, we'll start to retro burn towards the surface again. Which I'm thinking... Let's see. We are heading towards about here. Let's just go on ahead and time warp. And do a quick save just in case. Okay, that looks like a nice spot to land coming up. Let's retro burn. Gonna retro burn down to about 50 meters per second. We're looking to land right around here. That looks like a nice area to land. It's nice and bubble enough. Let's 
go ahead and back off at 100 instead, just so we can make absolutely sure that we're going to land where we want to land. Let's time warp. Okay, we're going a little past where we want to land, maybe. Mm, no, we're right on. Because now that we're close to being over top of where we want to land, we can begin to reduce our speed down to 50 meters per second or so. And we'll finish our time warp down to 5,000 where it will cut us off automatically. We're back down to times one, so let's exit our time warp and prepare to land, turn our RCS on, begin to reduce our speed, not too quickly, but not too slowly. want to do is reduce it just enough to where you're going to be landing at about 5 meters per second or lower. Nice slow burn, controlling your throttle. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like to wait forever to land either, so I like to come in a little hot, but not too fast. So it's starting to slow down lower than 20 meters per second pretty quickly, so I'll just adjust that to where it's barely slowing us down, and we'll keep an eye on where we are uh, relative to the surface. Once we get really close, we'll see our shadow really nice, start to slow down a little bit faster. Turn SES off, turn it back on, so we just lock to where we are pointing. And increase our throttle a little bit, slow it back down a little bit. Oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no. Might have to take back off, might not. Let's see. Wasn't paying enough attention. Let's use our stick and try to stay pointing up towards that nice dot in the blue. Check our rotation. Uh, this is not going good. Uh -oh, we might have to take back off. Okay. Let's take back off real quick. That did not go as planned. Let's reload and do that properly because I was totally distracted and was not paying attention. Alright, as soon as this reloads, here in just a moment, okay, I'll try not to get distracted this time, let's lock retrograde, and we will time warp to a nice area, try not to pull around as much this time. Let's retro burn, reduce our speed as much as possible, as quickly as possible, down to about 100 meters per second again. Plus the placement of the landing gear without those two outer tanks don't necessarily make this any easier to land because we don't have any side landing legs where the other tanks were, so that presents a little bit of a challenge. But we can make it work. And let's begin to reduce that speed back down to about 50. Might be landing right on top of a rock this time, which makes getting a mun rock easier. <laughs> Alright, let's finish this landing. Let's concentrate and Turn our RCS on. Let's reduce that speed a little bit. Our shadow will go from a little black ball into an actual shadow here momentarily. That's when we really need to start paying attention and reducing our speed. And there it goes. Reduce it down to about 20. There goes the shadow. this a little earlier this time. 
back off once it hits about 3 meters per second. engines off, make sure to try to keep ourselves pointing up, I don't like this angle but we will work with it, let's turn our brakes on by hitting square, oh no, this landing gear is not going to cooperate is it, okay, we can get rid of those side tanks, make this landing a little easier, lock retrograde really quick, turn our thrusters on, Reduce that speed super quick. There we go, now this will be a much easier landing without the unruly landing gear from those outer stages. <laughs> Looking good, okay. Now rest in peace, fuel stages and external tanks. <laughs> Look at them go. Looks like only the landing gear survived. Huh, how about that? Okay, let's turn our RCS off. And it should be safe to turn our SAS off. Okay, good. We have landed. Let's quick save. And let's begin doing some science. Alright, let's check our mystery goo. And then we'll get our temperature log. Go over here to our barometric reader, and we'll get our crew report, and then we will get our engineer out to start deploying all the science. But first, let's get our EVA report and our surface sample, garner some really good science from that. Next up is the EVA report. Let's go ahead and then turn our light on and grab some of this new breaking ground science. We'll start off with the control module. And hop down to the ground, turn SES on, RCS on, and nice smooth landing. Let's move a little away from our vessel so we don't damage any of this stuff when we take off. Alright, now let's go ahead and place our first module out of our inventory and onto the ground. I want to try to keep most of this stuff as close together as possible. Let's go back over here. Get nice and close to the vessel. And then highlight our cargo again. Move around until we can access the cargo. Okay, so it's still too high up for us to be able to access from the ground, so we'll just Go ahead and use our RCS backpack to pop up here a little bit, and then we'll grab, oh, well, let's just go ahead and grab the vessel then, move forward a little bit so we don't knock it over, do it nice and slow and smooth. Okay, now let's grab our goo monitor, turn our RCS back on. Okay, let's go over here. Looks like we already have a goo monitor out there, don't we? Is that a goo monitor or is that a control station? That is an experiment control station. Okay, so we still need to set our goo monitor. Let's go ahead and place it now. Then we'll hop back over here and grab our vessel again. grab one of these photovoltaic panels, hop down there, turn our RCS on, uh oh, oof, yeah. that was almost a rough landing again, but let's move on over here and place one of these with our engineer, now our engineer is not even level 1, so I'm kind of curious if we place this, if we'll get that extra bonus power or not. But once it deploys, we will find out. Alright, so it's producing two units of power. Which means this is powered. And 
controlling this, which is also powered, and producing science. That's all that we can do here. We still have our backups, but we're not going to use those since these worked out just fine. So let's go ahead and... Oh! We need to place a flag, don't we? And we need to grab a Munrock. So let's leave Bill over here for a moment to get Jebediah out of our vessel. Alright, Jebediah, hop on out. The vessel should be fine without you. Let's turn your lights on and let go. Turn our RCS on. Cool. Alright, let's plant this flag. I like to plant them to where the sun's going to hit them. So the sun is right there. And it's heading that way, so that means ouch. Let's head over here in front of the control module and all the rest of the stuff and place the flag facing towards 180 degrees. Plant that flag, plant that flag. Nice view there. That'll be flag number two. First flag was planted on Kerbin, second one on the Mun. Now let's look for a space rock to bring home. Can't forget that. Zoom out by holding L1 or the left shoulder button and using the stick. I think we see one right over here. I think we also see one right there, real nice and close. Nope, that's a landing leg. Okay. I see a moon rock right over there, which is at about 90 degrees. No, no, north. There we go. Yep, it's right over there towards the north side. So we'll zoom back in. We will face north, turn on RCS, and go grab that rock. Got to keep an eye on our prograde marker. We have a very fast forward speed of 24 meters per second. We can keep raising that so we're, we're moving forward. And then left stick back to reduce our speed. While also still trying to make sure that we don't smash into the ground with the, with the right trigger moving us up. And we will get nice and close to this rock where it's actually asking us if we want to climb on it. Once we are there, we will grab the Munstone. Let's put that in our pockets for 120 science. We cannot transmit the data on that and get anything out of it. We have to bring it home. Alright, so let's go back to our vessel. Lots of little markers over here, but we know our vessel is our vessel by looking for the pinkish purplish square. You can see our flag with the bluish light blue aqua square. And once we get nice and close we'll reorient ourselves and slow ourselves down a little bit. You do kinda have to be careful with your backpack. You do have a good bit of fuel and it does last a good while but uh, it does run out Jebediah's back on. See, all of that used almost half of our fuel. But, uh, we have planted our flag. We are bringing science back from the surface and from around the Mun. We are bringing back the Munstone, and we are going to be returning from the surface. So, upon returning, that should knock out every single contract that we had. So let's swap back to... Who is that? Bill? Yeah, let's swap back to Bill. See that vessel wobbling a little bit? Oof. Okay, let's get Bill back in the back in the ship. And go back home. For a nice, I'd say, 25 to 30 minutes extended time on this episode. By the time we get done with everything. Let's turn our brakes off. SAS on. And we are wanting to burn towards the 90 mark. Much like Kerbin, but way faster. So let's go ahead and take off nice and slow. Build up a little bit of momentum towards the sky. If you want to call it that. I say space, I guess. And then once we hit about 20 on this 90 degree inclination, we'll lock and go full throttle. 
retract our landing gear, reorient ourselves a little bit. A little heavy, isn't it? But it's still working. Glad to have you with us. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We are on the opposite side of where we really want to be to make a full burn to go back immediately, so we'll just um, wait until that's about 20,000, and we'll time warp over there, make sure we're locked on to prograde. Shouldn't take much, but about maybe 10 seconds to finish our circularization back around the Mun. So we'll warp ahead to where we have about that much time left to finish our circularization. As soon as it hits about 10 seconds, we'll start our burn. Just waiting for that now. Two, one, burn. We'll let that wrap around, finish off the orbits, or reorbit. As soon as the apoapsis flips about halfway, we'll stop. That's a nice orbit. And then we're going to try to make a more efficient burn by going to where we are right in between the Mun and Kerbin. By then we'll be pointing retrograde upon arrival. We'll need to reorient prograde. We'll let it do that and then we'll start our burn. And if I'm not mistaken, if we burn from this side of the Mun, where we are right in between it and Kerbin, it should take us straight back to Kerbin. But we'll find out. Usually I like to land there on the Mun, and then as I'm taking off, I can just burn straight towards the horizon and make it straight back to Kerbin, but we'll find out. Alright, let's go ahead and start our burn. And then we'll zoom out and keep an eye on where this is going to take us. it is indeed going to bring us right back home. So that is the most efficient way to return from the Mun, I believe. So we'll bring that down to about 45 down to 35 or so. Okay, so we overshot it a little bit. So we'll point retro. How much delta V does this have? Wow. It's kind of tempting to go go on towards um, Minmus, to be honest, but we'll do that in the next episode. If the contract Calls for it, but we'll see. Alright, let's go on ahead and correct that down to, or up to about 35,000. That'll work. We'll quick save, activate our time warp one, time warp forward. Didn't even move it at all. Okay, so now let's warp just a little behind that periaps. Make sure that we are locked on retro. Okay, so now we're about 500,000 meters above the Earth, or Kerbin. Let's time warp down to about 85,000. Oh, overshot it. Okay, let's immediately set that to the surface, activate our engines, turn on our RCS. Coming in pretty hot, so we need to reduce this as quick as possible, or as quickly as it will let us. Might get a little dicey, but... I doubt it. I think we're fine. Let's orient ourselves here. And we are now making entry burn. I think we'll be okay. Our landing gear there might not be, but we'll see. <laughs> it's going to take a while to burn through all this fuel, then. It's not really necessary, but... We can actually turn our time warp one, but... I'm not going to set it all the way, I'm just going to set it three notches up, that way we don't lose control of the vessel. We'll have to finish burning through the fuel. And once we are out of the fuel, we'll 
turn off the time warp and eject that stage. Activate our drogue shoots and turn on the time warp. Once that is deployed, we'll wait until they fully deploy and we'll activate our other shoots. Looks like we're going to be hitting dirt too instead of water. A little hard to see where it's nighttime, but hopefully that helps. As soon as those fully deploy, I will hit square on the PS4, I think on the Xbox, that's uh, X. To turn off the time warp and turn our UI back on. Activate those other shoots and continue the time warp until we get real nice and close to the ground. At which point I will deactivate the time warp and we will be home. And we will have completed all those contracts and made it back from the mine. Nice and safe. Totally over engineered, as always. <laughs> it's a little bit of a waste of money, but it turned out okay. And I will now deactivate the time warp and let it land on its own. Turn off SES, turn off RCS, activate the brakes. Nice. And we are back. Let's uh, see if I can get anything from this other mystery goo. Since we haven't used it for anything else. Oh, three signs. Cool. Alright. Uh, in the grasslands, there's no science we can gain from the grasslands. No reason to get out of the pot or anything. We're home. Let's recover the vessel. And then we'll check those uh, accomplishments and contracts, and there should not be any contracts left to do after that. We have completed all five of them. We've done everything we can around the moon and on the moon. Well, for now. We have a lot of science to use real quick before we close out this episode. Look at all that science. Well, not a whole lot, but a lot uh, in numeric value from the little amount of science we did. And we recovered a few thousand bucks there from our pod. It's nice. And Bill leveled up. How about that? Alright. Now let's check our accomplishments. Got quite a few to check here. Science data. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. That's the one we want to check. Yeah, entered suborbital flight, landed on the surface, walked on the surface, planted a flag on the moon, and returned home from the surface of the moon. Let's check our contracts. All of them are now complete. So let's hop into the contracts menu and find out what we're going to be doing next. We are going to Minmus. Let's see. We're going to fly by, gather some scientific data, and come home. So that's what we'll be doing in the next episode. Let's see, we can also grab some science data from space around Kerbin for some extra cash. And looks like that's all we're going to be doing in the next episode. Pretty much what we did when we did our MUN flyby, except around Minmus now. We're going to do a quick flyby, make a quick orbital injection burn, and then deorbit burn real fast and then come home and followed by um, another uh, rendezvous, docking, and transfer, except around Minmus. And then after that we'll be landing on Minmus and deploying some breaking ground signs there as well. Which, speaking of which, if uh, we go ahead and do a little bit of time warping, we'll start to see some of the breaking ground signs pop up, if I'm not mistaken. It's, uh, fast forward just a little bit here and see if some of those don't start popping up. Huh, we're not getting any. I wonder why. Let's go to our tracking station and find out. It might be where it's on the far side of the moon and it won't be able to transmit that data until we put a satellite around the moon to relay the communication between the, the two things. Uh, before we do that, let's go on ahead and get rid of this debris. Get rid of all that. And because it's tidally locked, we probably never will until we put a satellite in orbit around the moon. So we'll take care of that maybe in the next episode as well. Actually, no. Let's go ahead and get it done right now. We'll extend this just a little further. I have time. 
we'll just go ahead and do it. Let's go to our VAV and build a, a relay real quick. gonna do this real fast I'll dedicate a whole nother episode to actually building relays and setting up a network but for now I'm just gonna do a real quick relay mission set those up that way. There's enough communication ability to just toss this thing out to the MUN and not have one around Kerbin. Make sure they don't smack into each other when they're extended. Very nice. Okay. Let's retract those. Let's see. Put some science on it just in case we ever feel like getting some money for some contracts for science data from the space around the moon. Alright. And then we'll build what's needed to transfer this thing to the moon after we get some structural integrity done. Like so. put this adapter at the bottom. Actually, no. I'm going to use this adapter. That'll be good. We just need to move these up a little bit. Like that. That'll be good. Alright. And then Oh, we don't have fairings yet. That's not good. Let's uh, rename this to Communication Relay Sat Dash One, and then go back to our space center so we can spend some of the science and unlock some more stuff. Really not wanting to make this like a two-hour episode, but we'll do what we have to do. Okay, so, let's see what we're going to need in the near future. going to need a bigger command pod. I can only do about two more of these, though. Let's get the new panels and some of this precision engineering for a better relay. We'll leave it at that. Go back to our VAB. They're going to scrap the CRS-1 and make it even better now. So that is not going to be our first relay. We can do better. Let's scrap this. Break out our new Probodyne hex. Set it to heavy. Let's go to our power. And we'll put these cheap ones on. About four of those, like so. Two by two. Auto strut those to grandparent. Let's go ahead and put a reaction control wheel on the top. And then we'll attach this relay to the top and auto strut it to grandparent and bring that in to about there. And we'll set two more relays out on the side like so. Radial two, set that to grandparent part. And then 
and when these are extended, they cannot be retracted once it's actually in flight, I don't believe, but uh, that'll be good. Now we just need some batteries. Set it here, five, four, and move those in. If I'm not mistaken, it's already at a point where there should be nothing concerning about the vessel. Yes, okay, so now we just need to build the rocket. We still don't have proper fairings for these, but uh, I think it'll be okay. We'll find out. Mm. Let's take our smallest fuel tank after we put a structural part so we can attach that to it. We'll put this here, and then we'll move these solar panels up just a little bit. Move it up one space, and we'll take our small fuel tank. Actually, no, let's go with our second smallest for that. There we go. And we'll stick a terrier on the bottom. And set it the root. Decouple. And we'll stick a inline stabilizer here. Set it to heavy. And we will take this fuel tank and attach it and stick a, another terrier on. And then we're going to get big. Let's put a decoupler below that. Grandparents. And we'll go to our next fuel tank size. Attach one of these there. size up again. Wrong tank, there we go. There's a reason why I'm putting this much vacuum fuel on it, because I'm wanting this to be a polar relay. We'll break out the Wolfhound engine, one of the best engines to use in space. Let's raise our satellite up a little bit after I put these back on. And move those back in again, since I did that wrong just now. Nope, we're going to have to rotate those so they don't conflict with those panels. There we go. Okay, now let's move those in. Hopefully, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Those set the grandparent. They are good. Alright. Now, let's try to move the vessel up so we can build the rest of this engine, or uh, rocket. I can find a spot to grab the entire thing. There we go. Let's move it up. Go down here. Now we just need to build a couple launch stages for this thing. Actually, one massive launch stage to get it off of Kerbin, and then the Wolfhound can take over, plus the two Terriers. So let's just uh, let's do that. Let's max out the weight for the, um, what is that called? The skipper. Yeah, let's max out the weight for the skipper itself. Might just be able to take this off and put another one of these on. Awfully close, but not close enough. Let's put that back on. Oh, that was already set to grandparent, wasn't it? Okay, there we go. And then we'll just put another one of these down here. Might even be able to put another one on, but we'll find out. Let's put that skipper on. It's at 55, and I can push 56. Okay, that's as good as that's going to get. Let's set that to root. Make sure that these are set to grandparent. Good. We just need to strut this up, and we'll be good to go. We'll strut it from where it reduces in size first. Up as high as we can get it, and then wherever it connects to, it connects to. There we go. Alright, nice. Okay, and then we just need to do the same thing here. Might be overkill on the struts, but eh. Alright, 
let's set those about there. Very good. All right, now we just need to set the aerodynamics. About three of these should do, I'd say. And set those to grandparent part. And then we'll check everything out. Nothing concerning about the vessel. Oh wow, that's way lower than it needs to be. Okay, so we'll just raise that up a little bit until it's about at the halfway point. And we'll grab our launch stabilizers. And put those there, and then raise that up to center of mass. About there should be good. And we'll lower our vessel back down to ground level. check our staging before we launch this thing and put a communications relay satellite in orbit around the moon, hopefully in a polar orbit. Let's just get these stages correctly real quick. Alright. Let's save and then launch. And we can use this relay satellite to um, get the data from our breaking ground modules that we have on the surface of the moon which are still operating, still getting power, it's just not able to transmit the science data to us. Not even really sure how much science we're going to get from that, but we're going to find out. Alright, let's launch. Uh, let's warp to the next morning, or actually let's get ourselves set up on a nice position for launching to the moon. behind the moon and we'll be ready. So about there, that'll be okay. Alright, go back to there. I see I saw him, throttle up and launch. Very, very, very small thrust away ratio. It's going to be very fuel efficient, much like the Saturn V, except way smaller. So the Saturn V weighed <laughs> Gosh, maybe ten times more than this thing. But we are on our way. And as we lift off and make orbit, we'll start to see the moon pop up over the, over the horizon once we reach space, I'd say. Let's take a look. Yeah, here in a two, three minutes, we'll see the moon popping over the horizon. But for now, let's focus on the launch. stage, so let's go on stage and break out the wolf out. Okay. 
best waiting on that 70,000 meter. As soon as we get there, we'll go sideways. <coughs> Alright, let's go sideways. We should be seeing the moon pop up over the horizon here soon. Lock on that sideways 90 degree inclination. Once it hits 100,000, back off. Actually, by the time it hits 100,000, the mun might be coming right over the horizon. And we'll be starting our burn back up. Let's uh, move this in a little bit so we can try to reduce that back down to 100,000 so we can make this a nice, efficient mun transfer. We are at almost 70,000. That's good. Okay, so now let's burn straight back towards the horizon. And if I highlight the MUN and set it as the target, let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, we're a little off. Okay, let's wait just a little bit. Okay, now we'll start burning prograde again. at about 500,000, there we go, then we'll make our transfer directly over to it, pointing retro, once we get there, hopefully we still have contact, oh, we lost power, okay, let's reload that save real fast, forgot to extend those solar panels, that's a, that's a novice mistake. <laughs> It's been a while since I've done a relay though. But then again, should always extend those before you go anywhere after leaving Kerbin anyways, but Alright, let's uh let's get those extended. One, two, three, and four. mistaken you cannot retract them once they're extended yep those are the cheap ones that's okay we don't ever have a reason to retract those it's a relay all right now where were we time warp a little bit and fast forward to the periaps make sure we're pointing retrograde should still have quite a bit of delta v to make this thing retro all right let's refocus on the Satellite, close our warp, and then time warp over to the periaps. Let's highlight it. Begin our burn. And once that hits about 500,000 on the dot, we'll back off. One little tiny burn, there we go. Close, very close. Alright, so let's go back to the periaps. We'll reduce the Apple Apps down as close to 500,000 as possible. We're going to have to do this again after we do the normal or anti-normal burn, but for now we'll just stick to making this as close as possible. Let's go ahead and time warp a little closer to that periaps. And now that we're aligned back on the retro, let's do that. Alright, close enough. Now let's point ourselves either normal or anti-normal. I like to go normal because there's a nice tiny little dot in the middle you can keep an eye on. But, here we go. Let's go on ahead and burn that until it reaches 270, I believe. And then we should be fully polar. 
Oh, we finally used up the rest of the Wolfhound stage. Time to stage to the first of the Terrier stages. Typically, trying to go polar after making orbit takes a good bit of Delta V, but we should have enough. And then some. Let's reduce, or let's pick up some speed here. And once it hits 270, we'll cut it off, and that should be polar. We just have to do a little bit of orbital correction burn, burning after that. It's good to over-engineer, but it's never too good on the wallet. And we are polar. Hello? Okay, we should be fully polar, looking good. Let's check our apoapsis and periapsis. Okay, we'll set ourselves to prograde and warp over to the apoapsis to make our periapsis a little closer to 500,000. Let's turn on our full network. Okay, we are connected to our breaking ground modules. Yay, we have a connection. Since I landed on the dark side. <laughs> After we're done here, we'll time warp a little bit and we should start receiving the signs from those modules. Now that we have a relay in orbit. Move a little closer. Time warp our cells manually here a little bit the rest of the way, and there. Now we just need to reduce that apoapsis a little bit. Should already be pointing retrograde upon arrival at the periapsis. Alright. Time warp in a little bit further, and stop. And then we'll slowly reduce that. There we go. That's, that's pretty close. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. Now we have a polar relay around the MUN. After landing on the MUN and deploying the breaking ground science, that way we can receive a signal from the breaking ground science, which looks like it's only getting every so often around this thing's orbit. There it goes. And are we going to get any data? No, because it's on the dark side right now. So let's wait until that's on the day side. And we should start getting some now that it has power. And as long as it gets a connection, which it's looking a little rough right now. I'm not sure we're getting anything. Us though. Might have to go to the actual modules modules themselves. Let's see. Let's highlight that and switch to it. So let's see what's going on here. This is connected, powered. That is connected and powered. It's got a science rate of 5%. So let's just go ahead and fast forward then. Or uh, there we are. Okay, it's got a connection, so science completed, not very much. We'll just uh, start time warping a little faster then. Not sure why it's not letting us. There we go. There it is. Okay, now we're getting some. Let's uh, back that off a little bit. Begin the time warp again. I guess where it's at an angle, it's kind of messing with it a little bit. There is more of it. Get back on the day side. Uh, come on. Alright, we'll stop it again. There's a little bit more. We'll let that finish all the way out. 
out to 100% of the science completed, then we'll get rid of it. And now we're starting to receive some. Okay. So this will take a minute. I'm probably... No, no, I want to wait so I can get all that science and finish off the episode by collecting the rest of the science tech that we're going to unlock. So we'll just sit here for just a little bit and let that reach 100%. Going to take quite a few days for it to finish, but it'll be worth it. I think <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, doing these like on Kerbin or on the Mun or on Minmus won't really get you a whole lot, but once you start going to like Duna, Ike, Eve, Gilly, and the other worlds, you'll really start to get more science out of it. Especially if you're playing on harder difficulties and it's harder to garner science. It's a great way to get extra science out of your missions, to squeeze a little bit more as you go from place to place and it's much, much harder to get science on the harder difficulties. So we are three quarters of the way there, another 25% to go. Once it hits about... Okay, well, we'll let it finish on this speed since it's actually working. Once it's done, we'll go back to the Space Center, unlock our new tech, see if we have any new contracts, maybe. And five, four, three, two, one, zero. Wait for it to transmit the rest of that science. And slow it down just a hair, maybe. Try to transmit this science, come on. Just waiting on you. Come on, transmit the science. Come on, you can do it. I have faith in you. Transmit the science. maintaining calm signal from time to time. I can see why it's not transmitting the science regularly, but if it doesn't do it within the next few seconds, I'm going to cut it off and just take what we have. Mm, okay, well, that's, that's what we're going to do. Let's go to the tracking station first, just to give it one more chance to give us the rest of the science before we get rid of it. See if we don't receive any more science after another couple days or so. We'll stop. Oh, oh. Okay, there we go. Alright, now let's get rid of that. I think we've gotten all we can get out of that. And we'll get rid of this debris. Now we have our first relay set up to begin our communications network. We have landed on the moon, returned. We have finished a lot of breaking ground science according to our activity log down here it has 32 notifications each one saying what uh, a bunch of nonsense mostly that's 18 18 18 18 18 18 more 18s more cannot deploys more cannot deploys so we got a little bit more science out of that enough to maybe unlock one more thing in the tech tree if we go for the 160 tier there might be something down here in the 90 that we need, and we can get two of those. Yes, we need these fairings, and we need the smaller engines and fuel tanks at some point, so we may as well go ahead and get those, but just in case, we can actually put a science lab up in orbit and get a lot of science out of that if we wanted to, but we're not going to do that yet. Um, don't need that yet. Don't need that yet. Don't need any of this yet. Larger fairings won't need those yet, nor the docking port either. We could use the larger tanks, but we don't really need those right now either. Don't need those. Don't need these larger engines yet either. Would be nice to have them though. 
Uh, it would be a lot nicer to have those than these two, so we'll just take that for now. We'll get the heavier rocketry to get these larger engines, such as the mainsail, which is very useful. The cheetah is also very useful. Bobcat's okay. The twin boar's okay. Skiff's okay. The wolfhound's better. But, uh, yeah, this cheetah engine and that mainsail, those are going to be very useful in the next episode. Uh, when we update our Mun landing rocket to go to Minmus. But for now, let's go ahead and save. Check our contracts, see if there's anything new that we can grab a hold of. Make sure we didn't lose these. So we have three years to complete that still. Good. Um, is there anything else? Build a new orbital station around Minmus that has two pilots on board. Can support five Kerbals, docking port, antenna. Yeah, it'd be worth the money, and we're gonna have to rendezvous two vessels anyways. And we can use the larger command pods, three by three, so that's six Kerbals. Have a pilot on both Jebediah and Valentina. Uh, docking port check, generate power check. We'll just have to stick some antennas on it. You know what? May as well do it. We'll, we'll take that. And it looks like that's going to be it for our contracts. So in the next episode, we're going to be flying by Menmus, grabbing some science and returning. As per this contract, then it's going to ask us to dock, or rendezvous, dock, and transfer between vessels around Menmus. And when we do that, we'll be knocking out it and this um, station contract. And when we do this first one, we'll also be knocking out the science data from the space around Kerbin when we make our way back home. Surprised it doesn't have anything for the science data from space around Minmus, but um, I'm sure we'll get that eventually. But for now, it looks like that's it. I'm going to wrap this up, and I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this extended two-hour episode where we landed on the Mun. Completed a bunch of science, did some breaking ground um, module science, and also launched our first relay into a polar orbit around the moon. Uh, once again, thank you for watching. Hope you had a great time. Hope you learned something. Hope this is helping some of you. And I uh, will see you all in the next episode. Thank you. Bye.